Mukoyo. Please be seated. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. The chamber is now back in session, and we'll give the floor to the co-prosecutor to put questions to this witness. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon. We were talking about um, the meeting you attended at which uh, the district chief provided instructions on uh, the types or categories of people to be purged. And I had asked you about for your recollection as to who the district chief or who, which district leaders were present at that meeting. I'd like to read to you uh, from your interview E319.1.21. And at answers 35 through 39, uh, you testified that the person who chaired that meeting uh, was District Comp, Comp Chim. Uh, at question and answer number 37, question, what was the name of the District Comp? Answer, his name was Chim. And at answer, question and answer 39, Question, did Chim, the district committee, tell the participants of those meetings about the types of people that had to be purged? Answer, yes, he did. Does this refresh your recollection that the district chief who chaired the meeting uh, identifying the groups to be purged was Chim? Answer, yes. It, it was Jim who addressed the oui, meeting at that time. And do you remember, was Chai also present Question. at this meeting? Si Chai était aussi à cette réunion? Vous en -vous? Chai. But. Answer, Réponse. yes, that Chai was also oui. in the meeting. Now, you indicated that at the same uh, meeting, uh, and this is from E319.1.21, answer 43, uh, you testified that you heard people from Kampuchea Krom were accused of being Yun spies and that the Khmer Krom had to be killed. The, uh, the evidence um, that's been admitted by this chamber includes lists from six different communes identifying Khmer Krom prepared in the same uh, time period as the Lon Nol documents we just looked at, that is April to May, 19, uh, April to May 1977. Uh, I don't want to tire you out looking at too many documents. Uh, but with your leave, Mr. President, I'd like to provide two of the Khmer Krom lists uh, to the witness, starting with E3-2281, E3-2281. With your leave, Mr. President. President, you may proceed. Allez-y, dit President. Uh, Mr. Witness, the uh, document that's just been presented to you is a report uh, signed by a, a cadre Mon dated the 4th of May 1977, which is titled a List of Kampuchea Krom People from Trapiang Tom Chung Commune, your commune. And it identifies 73 Khmer Krom families living in that commune, including their former occupation and the ranks of those who were former military. Uh, first, can you tell us uh, who was Mon, the person who signed this report? Answer. Mon was the commune chief Mon of Trapiang Tom Kang Chung. 
And was Mon one of the commune Question. representatives uh, who was present at the meeting you've described where instructions were provided on groups to be purged? Answer, yes, he was there. Can you take a look at this list? Uh, and are you able to tell us whether the Khmer Krom families on this list uh, were people who were originally from Trapyang Tom Chung commune, or whether they were people who had been evacuated um, and relocated to the district from Phnom Penh, uh, Kampuchea Krom, or other areas? Answer. I uh, have forgotten all these people. Réponse. I do not know whether the names here refer to si those who were from Cambodia Crown. I uh, do not know them all. De Crom, je ne les pas toutes. I'd like to show you. Um, and now, Mr. Witness, uh, two documents from uh, Popol Commune. Mr. President, uh, these are E3 slash 2262 and E3 slash 2917. Uh, with your leave, uh, if I may provide these documents to the witness. President, you may proceed. Mr. President? President, President, you may proceed, uh, Mr. Cope. Uh, thank you. Maître just Cope, some clarification from the prosecution. I, I believe the witness was just shown E3 slash 2281. And did I get that right? And the witness was told that these lists, uh, this list contains consists of, of Kampuchea Krom families. Um, but to be honest, I don't see that in that document. So if, if the prosecution would be so helpful as to tell me where he says Kampuchea Krom on this document. Uh, yes, I'd be happy to. This is one of these documents where uh, there's a difference uh, in translations. In the Khmer original, you can see Kampuchea Krom. The French translation has Kampuchea Krom. The English translation appears to have missed that. So it is there. Uh, it just was something that was missed in the English translation. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Prosecutor, Mr. Prosecutor, for this explanation. But this is really getting troubling. Um, Yesterday, uh, we still haven't heard back, by the way, Mr. President, uh, from the IT unit on this, but there seems to be a big discrepancy between the French translation of the original Khmer document and the English translation. Yesterday, we talked about the word uh, eliminated, and uh, that word appeared, I think, about 20 or 40 times in the French text. It didn't appear at all in the English text. Uh, besides the question if the abbreviation KT should not just be literally translated as KT, and that the interpretation of what KT means should be left to the parties uh, in their closing submissions uh, to argue. Uh, but these are all kinds of uh, uh, questions related to this document. If now Another essential ingredient of this document seems to be lost in the English translation, which is, after all, a working language. I think we're having uh, substantial problems. We are working in English, so we must um, uh, count on the fact that it is a literal translation and that the French and the English translations are the same. Mr. President, 
accusation. Monsieur le Président. If I may, I don't want to dwell on this very long. This is certainly an issue that can be addressed. There, there are procedures for this. There are many, many thousands of pages that have been translated in the case file. Uh, no one is perfect. And when these discrepancies arise, they can be submitted to CMS and corrected. Uh, it's part of the purpose of these court proceedings. So, um, we've identified one. Uh, CMS can look into it and, and make the necessary corrections. True as that may be, if I hadn't risen, then if I hadn't paid attention, then this uh, would have probably uh, gone past us. Um, I don't think it's a, a detailed problem or a marginal problem. It's a very fundamental problem. There should, no, there should be no mistake. There should be no misunderstanding whatsoever between uh, with the translations. It is a fundamental issue which possibly directs, uh, affects this witness and upcoming witnesses. So uh, to, to, to stand now and, and compare it with all the other thousand documents, I don't think that is fair. Avec des milliers d'autres documents ne me semble pas juste.
Bah, hey, Panyani. President. Uh, President. In relation to this matter, the first document, that is Khmer document. Le premier document. Le the Khmer document, document is the original document, so we need to rely on the original document, that is Khmer document, celui qui the Khmer version. Foi, and celui I believe uh, the co-prosecutor is aware of uh, the discrepancy of translation between English and Khmer, la et la Khmer. and also the French. And uh, I note that the co-prosecutor does not notify uh, the ITU concerning the matter, and uh, they allow this matter to arise again and again. And the chamber now instructs uh, to the party, and particularly the co-prosecutor, that uh, if they find any discrepancy in relation to si the document, they may notify the ITU. And as for the defense team, I encourage the National Council to uh, notify, to inform the their colleagues concerning uh, the uh, the word used and also the translation so that the proceeding can move uh, smoothly. The chamber has uh, taken action on this matter again and again, and uh, we asked uh, the senior legal officer to uh, coordinate with the CMS and particularly ITU to deal with the matter. We have uh, tried uh, working very hard on the matter, and uh, the problems still occur. And I hope that after I instruct, I give my instruction, it is uh, good for our uh, future practice. You may now proceed, uh, co-prosecutor. And we'll certainly do our, do our best to make sure that all uh, significant uh, discrepancies are, are brought to the attention. Uh, Mr. Witness, um, we were... Uh, I just provided you Monsieur with témoin, two documents from Popol Commune. Document E3-2917 is a report uh, that was sent uh, from Popol Commune in early May 1977 that refers to 64 Khmer Krom families who had been received in an exchange with Vietnam. And document E3-2262 is a list identifying 64 Khmer Krom families living in uh, that same commune, Popol commune, uh, including their former occupation. Uh, you have uh, stated in interview E319.1.21 at answer 97 um, that uh, a group you called the New Khmer Krom people, uh, meaning those who had just come to live there, not the ones who had been living in the villages for a long time, end of quote, were particularly targeted by the Khmer Rouge. My question for you is, did the new Khmer Krom people who you said were targeted include people who had been obtained in exchanges or trades with Vietnam? Answer. As Réponse. for the issue of exchanges or trades with Vietnam, I was not aware of it. Je ne savais rien de, de, de I only knew that uh, the wife and the husband Tout together savais, with, uh, uh, no, with no children uh, came to the place and they were the targets. Could you explain a little further as to who, who the people were, who you observed were targets? Pourriez-vous dire qui étaient les cibles, d'après ce que vous avez vu, demande l'accusation. 
constitution and uh, the targeted people were the Cambodia Crown people. Les Cambodia Crown, the Khmer Crown. Whether the husband and wife came with uh, children or with no children, they were identified as a UN uh, spies agent, or they were identified as uh, KGB agents. Comme espion yuen ou vietnamien ou encore comme espion du KGB. And and what was the uh, significance Question. of whether they had children or not? Quelle était l'importance des enfants? Qu'est-ce que cela voulait dire qu'ils aient des enfants ou pas? Answer. Réponse. For those who came in the place with no children, they came enfants, to work at that place uh, according to the orders from the top. Conformément aux ordres venus d'en haut. Okay, we, we've seen, uh, I've shown you uh, two examples of the lists uh, that were compiled by communes uh, identifying Khmer Krom. Uh, do you remember at the meeting you attended or at uh, other occasions whether there were instructions given uh, to register or prepare lists of the Khmer Krom people living in each commune? Answer. There were meetings Réponse. instructing communes and village chiefs to prepare the list, and the list had to be sent upward. And do you remember who it was that gave the instruction to the commune chiefs to prepare these lists? À donner les instructions au chef. The, the district committee. Réponse, le comité du district. I want to uh, ask you now um, about a couple of, of statements you made in your OCIJ interviews. Um, first, at uh, interview E3 slash 5511, answer 10, uh, you made the following statement, quote, Vietnamese people were not mentioned in the conference, but later on all Vietnamese people who lived in the village disappeared, end of quote. Um, my question for you is, um, uh, where were these Vietnamese people living who disappeared, and when was it that they disappeared? And the, those Vietnamese people disappeared at night time or during the time that uh, they were working in the field or in the Ou canal work site. These people were called out and then they were taken away. And in interview E319.1.21, uh, referring you to question and answer 103, uh, reads as follows. Question. How did you know that Khmer Krom people were sent to Krang Tachan prison or prison 204? Answer. I did not know about Krang Tachan prison. But I knew they were imprisoned at Prison 204 because my hospital was located along the roadside. One day, I saw a group of over 20 people being escorted on foot from Kiravong District. They stopped at my place to ask for medicines. I asked them what was happening to those people, and they said they were all KGB and UN spies, and they stated that the people were being sent to Prison 204. Can you first tell us where was Prison 204 located? Uh, how far away was it from your hospital? Answer. 
It was réponse. in Breakdoit Commune, currently Ozarai Commune. Ozarai, aujourd'hui. It was about uh, 17 or 18 kilometers away from my hospital at that time. Do you remember what year it was when you saw this uh, group of 20 people being arrested and taken towards Prison 204? Can you mark, Answer, I have, did not recall the year. I never think of it. And I wanted to clarify one thing. Um, uh, did you believe that this group of 20 prisoners was Khmer Krom? Were you told that they were Khmer Krom? Or was all you were told by the cadres who arrested them uh, that they were people accused of being KGB or UN spies? Can, can you clarify that for us? Answer. What I knew is that the I was told that these people were Khmer Krom, and I was not told that uh, these people were KGB or CIA. I was just told that uh, they were Khmer Krom. There were the uh, people who escorted uh, the, those people to uh, the prison, and uh, the people who escorted uh, those Khmer Krom came to me and asked for medicines. Venus me voir et m'ont demandé des médicaments. And do you know that the people who were escorting these Question. prisoners, were Les they district cadres from Tramcock? Were they sector cadres? Um, who, who were these des people? Cadres du secteur. Qui étaient ces personnes? Qui est, qui est, que you niveau étaient-elles? Answer, I Réponse. do not know their names, Je ne connais pas leur nom. but I was told that They were from uh, Kiriwong, Kiriwong district. That is district, district 109. De district 109. And do you know whether prison Question. 204 was a district si prison, prison, a sector prison, prison, or a zone district, prison? Une prison de Answer. I did not know Réponse. whether prison 204 was si zone sector or district prison, but district uh, this uh, prison 204 prison was in uh, district 105. Did you visit uh, the prison 204 site uh, after the fall of the Khmer Rouge regime? And if so, can you tell the court what you saw when you visited that site? Ce que vous avez vu lorsque vous vous êtes rendu sur ce site. Answer. Prison 204. Réponse. La prison the buildings uh, was in bad condition. There were two Côté small buildings, uh, roof with uh, leaves. And uh, the, the buildings uh, were in bad condition. I uh, went to a farm near the place. Some uh, farmers uh, went to work uh, on their farm in the area, and uh, they found some bodies and also, uh, and also some scalps. Et des corps. Did you see uh, these rema human remains Question. yourself, or were you just told about them? Have you seen these human remains with your own eyes, or did you hear them talking? After I returned from clearing the forest for a plantation, Réponse, je suis après I avoir saw a few skulls there and some other skeleton remains. 
des dépouilles humaines, However, de squelettes. Were the remains of a few people and not many. Il y avait quelques and I believe uh, they were thrown away by the peasants who got it from the rice fields that they planted the rice. Déblayés dans les rizières qu'ils cultivaient. Oh, thank you. Um, another group of people. Um, Question that you Merci. said the district leaders instructed were to be purged were, and I quote from your answer that I've read before, people who went around speaking against the Khmer Rouge, uh, end of quote. Um, uh, Mr. President, at this time I'd like to provide uh, to the witness with your leave document E3 slash 4093, E3 slash 4093. E3 slash 4093. Mr. Witness, I'm giving you uh, two uh, parts, two documents from E34093. Um, the first, uh, Khmer 00270786 through 87, English 00831486, uh, French 00729674. Uh, this is a letter from Tassan dated the 7th of August 1978, uh, providing instructions to sweep clean the widows from Trapping Tom Kang Chung, who are currently staying at the place of Comrade Ming. And the other the document, Khmer 00. 270-788 through 89, English 00831-487 through 88, and French 00729-674 through 75, uh, contains a, a note from Meng dated the 8th of August 1978 uh, and appears to attach a report from Trapping Tom Chung regarding five widows who had criticized the revolution and planned to flee to Vietnam. Um, my first question is, uh, did you know who Comrade Meng was? No, I did not know this person. Réponse. Non, je ne connaissais pas cette personne. Uh, do you know uh, whether there was Question. a unit called a widow's unit in Trapyang Tom Chung commune? De de -Tom -Chung? Yes, there Réponse. was. Oui. There, there was a uh, widow unit. Une unité de veuve. And can you explain uh, what, what, what was the widow's unit? Question. Pourriez-vous nous dire en quoi consistait cette unité de veuve A widow's unit comprised of those widows who husband died or who husband or, the, or that they were no longer with their husbands and mostly they were women from Phnom Penh. Il s'agissait surtout des femmes de Phnom Penh. Do you know why these women were put in a separate unit? Question, savez-vous pourquoi ces femmes étaient placées dans une unité à part? I did not know the Réponse. reason for this non, uh, widow's unit. I'm going to refer now to a 
a statement from your DC CAM interview, D313 slash 1.2.409. Uh, this reference is at Khmer 00418846, English 00729063. Uh, and French 0080864565. And you made the following statement uh, at that part of your DC CAM interview. Quote, In political and enemy terms, there were so called enemies allegedly infiltrating among patients or following one another. We were ordered to identify such enemies. My question to you is, who was it that ordered the district hospital to identify enemies amongst patients? It was the district committee or district secretary. C'était le comité ou le secrétaire du district. Was there a particular district chief who provided this instruction, or was this something that was uh, instructed by all the people who served as district chief? Pouvait-il s'agir de toutes les personnes qui ont été chefs de district à un moment ou à un autre? There was a general instruction for all, including the hospital, regarding this matter. I'd now like to um, ask you a few questions relating to a, a couple of issues of the a CPK publication a revolutionary flag. PCK, uh, with your leave, Mr. President, uh, I'd first like to provide si to the witness uh, the April 1977 issue of Revolutionary Flag, uh, which is document E3-742. Yes, you may proceed. Le President, je vous en prie. And Mr. Witness, this document is the April 1977 issue of uh, Revolutionary Flag. Um, April 1977 is a time period we have been discussing in the documents uh, I've been showing you uh, today. And if you'd start by looking at the very end of this issue, at the very uh, the last page or second to last page, uh, at the end of this issue, uh, the party cadres uh, were provided the following instruction. Quote, number one, every base area and every unit must organize the study of this document. Number two, it is imperative to organize that study primarily collectively. Then there must be additional study by group or individually. End of quote. I'd like to read a couple of passages to you from the April 1977 issue of Revolutionary Flag to see if you recall uh, ever receiving instruction uh, on these matters by the uh, leaders of Tramcock okay. District. Uh, the first reference is at Khmer 00062986, English 00478496, and French 00499754. Which contains the following uh, statement, quote, as for the enemies that are CIA, KGB, and UN agents, the cheap running dogs of the enemy that sneakily embed inside our revolution and our revolutionary ranks, continuing below, we must continue to strike them 
and trample them from our position of absolute advantage and must constantly be on the offensive against them during 1977 to smash them even more so they cannot raise their heads, end of quote. The second passage I want to refer you to is at Khmer 00062991, English 00478501, and French 00499758 which reads as follows, quote, It is imperative to indoctrinate and whip up the masses into a force to seek out the enemy, assess the enemy, analyze the enemy, track the enemy, pressure the enemy, capture the enemy, to smash the enemy, and to make the enemy be like a rat surrounded by a crowd of people beating and smashing it, end of quote. And the last passage I want to refer you to is at Khmer 00062994, English 00478502303, and French 00499760, which reads as follows, quote, each location must take the leadership role to push the mission profoundly in order to further seize, expand, and increase the power of socialist revolution. So the power of socialist revolution will trample the enemy and trample the remnants of the various oppressor classes, trample the remnants of the various private ownership regi regimes, and smash them to bits to prevent them from being able to raise their heads no matter where they are, even if they are at some small location. End of quote. Um, Mr. Witness, do you recall uh, issues like this uh, being discussed at any of the district meetings you attended? J'aimerais savoir, Monsieur le témoin, si vous avez entendu ces consignes, ce genre de consignes, au cours des réunions du district. On the issue of the Réponse. Revolutionary Flag magazine, personally, I never saw it Personnellement, je n'ai jamais vu ce numéro ni quelque numéro que ce soit de l'étendard révolutionnaire pendant le régime. Do you remember, was the revolutionary flag Question. ever read at any of the meetings you attended, read by the district leaders. No. I never heard them saying anything regarding this question. Do you remember receiving, aside from the issue of revolutionary flag, do you remember receiving Hormis instructions uh, or directions along the lines of what I just read? That is, um, that uh, cadres were to be on, to be on the lookout je, for enemies. No. And Mr. President, the next uh, two documents I would like to provide to the witness are E3-135, E3-135, E3 and E3-289. E3-135 uh, E3 is the July 1977 revolutionary flag. E3-289 is a uh, copy of a Democratic Campuchia radio broadcast. Émission radio diffusée de la radio du Campuchia démocratique de juillet 1977. Oh. Yes. Le président, allez-y. Mr. President, I have an objection. We have just established that uh, the witness has never seen a revolutionary flag. I know, Le témoin vient de dire qu'il n'avait jamais vu de numéro de l'étendard révolutionnaire. Nous avons établi avant qu'ils l'aient vu. 
Nous ne savions pas auparavant s'il en avait vu ou pas, mais maintenant que nous savons qu'il n'a jamais vu de numéro de l'étendard révolutionnaire, je ne vois pas l'intérêt de lui montrer ces documents. Donc je soulève une objection. Monsieur le Président, ce sont deux documents différents qui annoncent l'annonce du The honorary red flag to Tramcock District. It was done both through revolutionary flag and on the radio. So I've given the witness both documents to see whether either of them refreshes recollection about the event. Le témoin a entendu parler de cet événement, donc de la remise de cette récompense du drapeau rouge au district de Tramcock. President, Le Président, the objection raised by the Defense Council is denied. L'objection de la défense est rejetée. And the chamber allows the documents to be uh, shown to the witness. And Mr. Witness, please uh, refer to the document Monsieur and respond to the question that will be put to you by the prosecution. À la question qui vous a été posée par l'accusation. And uh, for the record, Mr. President, the excerpt from E3. Uh, 289, um, that is the particular radio broadcast, is at pages Khmer 010-64-303-307, English 0016-509-511, and French 010-66-9073. Um, Mr. Witness, the, the reason I provided these documents Monsieur to you Président, is that on uh, the Monsieur 30th Thémoin, pardon, of June 1977, uh, approximately two months after some of the documents document, and events we've been discussing, uh, the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Kampuchea awarded the honorary red flag to Tramkak District, recognizing it as one of three model districts in all of Democratic Kampuchea. Um, that award was both announced in the revolutionary flag issue that I gave you uh, and announced in a radio broadcast um, that is in the second document I provided to you. Uh, my question, uh, do you remember hearing that Tramcock had been recognized by the Khmer Rouge leaders as a model district in Democratic Kampuchea? No, I did not hear about that, nor was I told about it. Non, je n'en ai pas entendu parler. Personne ne m'en a parlé. This morning, uh, you told um, ce matin, my colleague about vous avez dit, uh, uh, mon collègue, seeing Q Sampan in Tramcock District at one Kyo point. Sampan, uh, other than Q Sampan, Tramcock, uh, did fois, you see any other Khmer Rouge leaders part, come Kyo to Tramcock District? Dans le district de Tramcock. No, the, I did not. Réponse, non. What about Tamok? Uh, how often did you see him Question. Um, between Tamok? April 1975 and Combien January 1979? I saw him Réponse. three to four times Je during vu the regime. Deux ou trois fois sous le regime. And can you uh, uh, tell the court where it was that you... Question. President, uh, the prosecution, uh, please wait, and the defense counsel, on. Do you have the, the floor? Plaît, on, uh, on a la thank you, Mr. Maître President. I'd like to make uh, an observation regarding the line of questioning by the prosecution. I think it leads to uh, misunderstanding. That in his uh, previous response, he stated he saw kills and porn during the period of 1957 or 58. En 1977, and then the national co-producer tried to clarify whether Ensuite, it was in 67 or 68. However, Mais just then, the international co-producer co tries to link the year 
of uh, the year that the witness encountered of May de Tamok through uh, the time or the year that this in, the witness saw Mr. Kirsten Paul, that is, put the time in between 75 to 79. And that is my observation, Mr. President. I'll respond briefly. First, I wasn't making any link. Second, counsel, you've, mistake, you've completely misstated the evidence from this morning. This witness testified to two things. One, that he heard uh, that Kirsten Paul came to meet with Tamak in uh, 57. 58, 67, 68. Second, he testified that during the period he was working at the Kapork Trebek Dam uh, uh, on one day, he went with the wife of Tamak and saw Kusampan. Two separate testimonies. In any event, there's no link being made here. I'm asking this witness now about when he saw Tamak. That's the question. President, uh, President, the Deputy International Court Prosecutor, in fact, you uh, may proceed. There is no Le need to wait for the ruling from the Chamber as ensuite, the Defense Council only made an observation and not an objection. Defense Council. The, the co prosecutor just stated Le that uh, he saw Kiel Sampon a couple of drop bike, and I think this is just like to feed uh, the information to the witness. President Il and the deputy international co prosecutor, please uh, refresh your last Monsieur question Co to the witness. Question. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Witness, you said you Merci, remember Président. seeing Tamak three or four Monsieur times uh, during the Khmer Rouge regime. Can you tell us where it was that you would see Tamak? I saw Tamok. Uh, while he was in a vehicle and I was walking alongside the road. And in fact, route, there was only one time that he stopped his car near where I worked, but he didn't get off the car. Uh, on any of these occasions, Question. did you talk to Tamak when he was driving, autre, uh, 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 driving uh, on the road near your hospital. No, I did not uh, talk to him. Non, I only saw him and then I just uh, went away. I didn't want to see him as I was uh, scared of him. Why were you scared of Tamok? Question: Pourquoi avez-vous aviez vous peur de Tamok? I did not know why. I just. Uh, Réponse: Je ne sais pas pourquoi j'avais peur. Of, of, I was scared of him, and I was not the only one. Many other people felt the same thing. Beaucoup de personnes avaient peur de lui. While we're uh, talking about Tamak, uh, I wanted to ask you uh, a few questions about um, some of his relatives and in particular uh, whether they had positions in the, uh, the Khmer Rouge regime. Um, this morning you've already identified from my colleague um, a brother of Tamak named Chum. Uh, did Tamak also have a brother named Chung? And if so, uh, what position did Chong oui, hold during the Khmer Rouge regime? Tamok had a younger, a younger brother Tamok by the name of Chong. He was the Kpo Patrobai commune chief. Le chef de la commune de Pronounce, uh, perhaps my pronunciation was not very good. Um, I was talking about the other brother of Tamok, a person who I believe was named Chong. Uh, did you know Chong? Did you know what position he held during the regime? I 
I uh, know that his uh, younger brother named John. Vous connaissez son frère cadet, John, qui était uh, secrétaire district, adjoint du district uh, 55, 55 that is Kabah, uh, district. le district de Trabel. And you discussed this morning a sister of Tamak named Kuhn, uh, who held a position at the zone or sector hospital. Um, was this the sister who was married to Tassan? Yes. Kuhn was the wife of Tassan. Kuhn était la femme de Tassan, effectivement. And I just wanted to clarify something about uh, the hospitals, the sector hospitals. Um, in your uh, DC CAM interview, D313 uh, slash 1.2.409 uh, at Khmer 00418835, English 00729050 uh, and French 00808031. You stated as follows, quote, sector health centers were located in Dum Chambak School and Trapyang Ronib. End of quote. Um, I wanted you to clarify two, two things. One, uh, were there more than one sector health center, more than one sector hospital? And second, can you clarify which hospital it was that Kuhn worked at? The zone hospital, the general, Réponse. this for the general treatment, uh, there was one at the Chumbok. And there was a military hospital for the treatment of soldiers. It was at, uh, that is, uh, Hospital 22. And there was a sector hospital at the Tafayang Road that was for the uh, general uh, treatment of people as well. Qui concernait également, oui, qui accueillait les uh, and the, the military hospital, the one called Hospital Question. 22, Et where was that located? Hospital 22 was located at Bordo. 22 And which of these hospitals was the one that Kun worked at? À quel hôpital travaillait Kun? Lequel parmi ces hôpitaux? Kun worked Kun in the, uh, the hospital located uh, at Dam Chambo. Travailler à l'hôpital qui se trouvait à Daim Chumba. And I'd like to turn now to a few questions about uh, the daughters of Tamak. Um, we've already Tamak. talked about one Nous of his daughters, Kom, who you Kom. identified as a uh, Tramcock district secretary for a period. Um, did Tamak have another daughter Tamak named How? or Ho, and what positions did she hold during the Khmer Rouge regime? As for the children of uh, Tamok, I only know one, Je that is uh, Jay Kong, because I did not uh, know uh, the other Je daughters as they were not at home while I was there. À la maison lorsque moi j'y étais. So you don't, do I understand you correctly, you don't remember donc, uh, his other si daughters compris, well enough to tell, up, tell us whether they had positions uh, in any hospitals si in the southwest zone? Elles avaient des fonctions ou non dans un quelconque hôpital de la zone sud-ouest. But, answer, yes. Réponse, c'est exact.
I want to turn now to um, a matter you testified about in your OCIJ interviews, uh, and that is a, a trip you made to Krang Tachan prison. In interview E319.1.21, at answer 125, uh, you described uh, this visit to Krang Tachan prison, uh, testifying as follows, quote, many prisoners died of malaria at the prison then. Tachim, who was district committee, wrote a letter to my hospital requesting us to spray DDT inside the prison to kill mosquitoes. When I got there, I saw many prisoners. And continuing below at answers 128 to 130, question, were those prisoners shackled when you saw them? Answer, I saw all of them lying on the floor. There were about three or four rows of them. A question, did you talk to the chairman of Krang Tachan prison? Answer, Yes, I talked with him, and he gave instructions on where to spray the insecticide. Question, how many times did you spray at Krang Tachan prison? Answer, only once. You uh, indicated in this statement um, that many prisoners had died of malaria at the prison. Uh, how did you know this? And uh, I was aware of it because if uh, the prisoner did not die of malaria, I would not be called to spray the, the insecticide. Do you remember uh, when it was that you made uh, this? trip to spray insecticide in Krang Tachan. Do you remember the year? Answer. I did not recall it. I did not know when it was. Je ne sais pas quand que you uh, indicated that when you were there, you talked to the chairman of Krang Tachan prison who gave you instructions on where to spray the insecticide. Uh, who, who was the prison chairman that you talked to? Answer. It was Anne, the prison chief. He asked me to spray the insecticide. And do you remember approximately how long you were at Krang Tachan that day uh, while you were spraying the insecticides? Answer. I was there for half an hour and uh, I uh, spray uh, five buckets of the insecticide. I was there for half an hour. In uh, your interview E3 slash 5511 at answer number 18, um, you made the following statement, quote, while spraying, I met a man from Hanoi who was also a prisoner but he was outside the cell. I asked him to take care of Han. And I'm going to ask you some more questions about Han later. Uh, first, I want to ask you about this man from Hanoi. Um, who was uh, this man who you saw at Krang Tachan? And how did you know he was from Hanoi? And uh, I knew that he was from Hanoi because after his arrival from Hanoi, he worked uh, with the commune chief. He went to various uh, commune chiefs uh, to various uh, communes. 
He was at Hanoi for three years, and after that he returned back to Cambodia, and he went uh, to communes with the commune chief. I knew him because he was uh, walking around with the commune chiefs. So this is someone who uh, had uh, been in Hanoi for three years, but then had returned and had a position in Tram Cock District. Do I understand correctly? Answer, yes, that is correct. Do you remember the name of this person? Question, vous souvenez-vous du nom de cette personne? Answer, his name was Jia. Réponse, il s'appelait Jia. And in, also in regards to your visit to Krang Tachan, uh, do you remember uh, approximately how many prisoners were there uh, on the day that you uh, visited the prison? Answer. I uh, looked into one building. There were four rows of four rows of uh, prisoners. So it was. There were about uh, f uh, 100 uh, prisoners, and after I uh, glanced at into the building, I uh, walked away. Mr. President, I was going to change to another subject now. I can either continue or uh, move to the new subject after the break. President, it is now appropriate time for a short break. The court will take a short break from now until 3 o'clock. Court officer, please find a proper place for the witness during the break time and have him returned together with his duty counsel back into the courtroom at 3 o'clock. The court is now adjourned. Something correct,